Good morning and welcome to Str Stretton Baptist Church. Welcome to all our viewers to our live stream service on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Pastor Chris. I'm your service leader for today. And today is a special day. Not only are we going live, but it's also the church anniversary as well. And there's been a Christian community on this site for over, um, for 228 years. So it's a very, very special occasion for us indeed. And so it's appropriate as we celebrate this anniversary to give thanks to God. So I'm going to do that now as we turn to Psalm 95 and we're going to read verses 1 to 7. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship, let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and He, we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Amen. So as we bring this service to God now in prayer, let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your gracious invitation to worship. Lord, we bow our knees, we bow our heads in reverence and respect. We are here to sing and to make, give joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Lord, as we celebrate the anniversary of this church, we give thanks to you for your steadfast love and your faithfulness to us throughout the years. We pray now by your Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with love and devotion to you as we give you our heartfelt praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So now we are going to um, have a time now of worship. Morning church, get ready to worship our Lord.
There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is.
comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise. Thank you, Francine and Ros, for leading us so beautifully in worship and just reminding us of the wonder of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. A couple of notices ahead for um, this week. First of all, that part of the church anniversary is to give a thanks offering to a local charities. And the two nominated charities this year are the Ashdown Jazz Academy and the Brixton and Norwood Food Bank, very appropriate um, charities at this time. Um, and if you'd like to make your um, Thanksgiving offering and you want to send them to the church, do mark them on the env envelope with the word Thanksgiving offering. If you're going to do that online via Bax transfer, use the reference Thanksgiving offering. I need to flag something up for you for, for next year. One of the things that we want to encourage the church to do um, in the new year is to focus on prayer. And at the beginning of the year, we will be launching a program, a prayer program called 40 Days of Prayer. And I have my workbook here for you. And the 40 Days of Prayer program is a whole church program of teaching, preaching, and Bible study. And we want to get the church working on this together, sharing on this together. And the information about the program will be with you in a few weeks. And um, we'll send out the information for that. And you'll be able to register your interest and also to purchase a workbook. So you're ready to launch the new year with prayer. 
A reminder that the racial justice listening forums continue and this afternoon at half past three and you can find the link to that on the streathambaptist.com website. You can also find the information on the church bulletin for this week. There is also pre um, prayer ministry after this morning's service. Again, you can find the link on the church web website, streathambaptist.com, and if you click under the calendar, you'll find the link there as well. The information is also in the church bulletin. There is also the Zoom drop-in after this morning's service for half an hour, a time of fellowship, and again, you'll find the link to that on the church website and also in the bulletin. Just want to add one further notice. Yesterday, just to say a big thank you to all those who worked hard to put together the Church Focus Day and everyone who participated. On Tuesday, we will be having the Way Forward Steering Group will be having a debrief, and um, we'd like you to make your comments and contribute to our discussions. So if you've got any further reflections on yesterday's Focus Day, do email us at wayforward at strettonbaptist.org. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, where we look forward to celebrating Christmas and the arrival and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today we're going to be lighting our first Advent candle, we're going to have a time of prayer and then a reflective time of worship. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. On this first Sunday in Advent, we pray for our world covered by a dark cloud of disease. Christ, shine a light. Today we pray for all those whose lives have been shrouded by the darkness of grief. Christ, shine a light. Today we pray for those lives overshadowed by the darkness of hopelessness, who fear the loss of health, home, business, or work. Christ, shine a light. Today, we pray for those who carry the burden of caring for the suffering and the sick. Christ, shine a light. Today, we pray for the many living in the darkness of isolation and loneliness who long for the comfort of companionship. Christ, shine a light. Today, we pray for those who feel their lives are sinking into the darkness of depression. O oh Christ, shine a light. Today, we pray for a generation of young people who feel their future prospects are blighted by the fear of economic uncertainty. Christ, shine a light. Today, we pray for our leaders whose vision of the future is obscured by the darkness of confusion. Christ, shine a light. 
Lord, as we enter this season of Advent and welcome your coming, remind us once again that the people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For his name is Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, and good morning, everyone, uh, far and near. Uh, my name is Chris Voke, and I'm down to preach today, uh, a regular member of the church and uh, a regular preacher, so uh, I'm comfortable here in church doing this live for you today, and God bless you all. 
And as Chris Andre Watson has already said, it is the first Sunday of Advent and we've lit the, the first of the Advent candles to remind us that Christ is coming and we anticipate the birth and the Advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to read today this, the passage which has been allocated, which is from Matthew's Gospel, and it's chapter 1, starting at verse 18. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dis dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife. Well, this is the beginning of it all. And I'm thinking of the idea of God's faithfulness in the Advent season. God sending the Savior as promised. And there is a, a ge geological phenomenon uh, called the Giza, in which water shoots up out of the ground and steam and amazes everyone. And there is one in the Yellowstone Park in America, which is called Old Faithful. And the reason it's called Old Faithful is because regularly, certainly known for hundreds of years, probably thousands of years, possibly millions of years, Old Faithful has been shooting its uh, steam and water out of the ground approximately every hour and a half, 150 feet into the air. And if you go there, and some of you will have been there, I'm sure, to Yellowstone Park and seen Old Faithful performing. And there you can stand and you can wait, and you can be absolutely sure that after a few minutes or half an hour or so, you will see Old Faithful shooting into the sky 20 times a day, time after time after time. And today, of course, it's our, uh, our church anniversary when we recall God's faithfulness to uh, this church. And we can personally recall many times when God has been faithful to us. He has, as it were, turned up on time and been faithful to us. And especially over this last year, this last difficult year. But uh, what about the times when... He does not appear, seem to appear. And of course, there are other geezers in the area around Yellowstone Park and in the world where you can never tell when the geezer is going to erupt. And you can stand there and stand there and stand there and wait maybe even for years before you discover that it is coming back again. And uh, maybe this year you have had times like that when you've waited and waited and waited and felt that God was not doing anything. You've lost a loved one. Some of us have lost people dear to us in the last few months. Or you've prayed and no healing came. Or you've been in financial stress or threatened with unemployment. Or just merely darkness of spirit. What then? Is God not faithful because of these experiences of ours? And many witnesses could be called to show uh, on both sides 
God is faithful. I testify to the faithfulness of God. And others would come and say, well, it doesn't appear to me that God has been faithful in this particular matter. Does it mean that God is not faithful? Now, of course, the Bible says repeatedly uh, in the Old Testament and the New that God is faithful. He does love. He stays near. He uh, is there to help and to touch us and to move us and to heal and to save. So God is faithful, it says. But how can we know that? How can we be absolutely confident of that? The answer is that we come to understand God's faithfulness in the end, not by focusing on the, uh, uh, the, the, store, the, the small things that happen in our lives, but upon the story that we have just read. And of course, all of God, Matthew's gospel and the gospel stories are the great thing. The believer's confidence in a faithful God is not based on the smaller things of our experience, but on the great thing that God has done. Not on occasional demonstrations, uncertain demonstrations of his faithfulness in individual lives. Although, of course, these are wonderful when they happen. You pray or you search for God and you search for an answer and he, 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 as it were, works the miracle, the amazing thing in your own life. But confidence ultimately is based not on those experiences, wonderful as they are, but on the great act of God that he did once and for all. And this is what Matthew is doing in chapter 1 of his gospel, what we call the incarnation, the birth of Jesus the Messiah, took place in this manner. This is how it happened, he says. Uh, and then in his whole gospel, of course, the life and the suffering and the death and the rising and the ascension and ruling of Jesus. This is the great act of God's faithfulness in which we are to dwell as Christian people, as believers. And if you have never believed, that is what you have to do. You have to discover this story in a new way and you have to begin to dwell in it and believe, not only believe it, but also live it out in your life. Now, Matthew does this in chapter 1 of his gospel uh, in a number of ways. He draws attention, first of all, to the Lord. And I put that in my notes in capital letters, because that's who it is. It is the L-O-R-D in capital letters of the Old Testament, the God of Israel, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the covenant God, the supreme and sovereign God of all. He is the one who kept on faithfully saving his people, Israel. Matthew speaks twice about the angel of the Lord. And again, you could put that in capital letters. He shows that at the back of his gospel story of Jesus stands this God, the faithful God of Israel, is now the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had kept faith with his people for centuries. And then he quotes one of uh, Israel's prophets, the prophet Isaiah, as it happens. And uh, he says that the greatest promise was of a Messiah who would come. And Matthew says, God fulfilled that promise. And here is that one. And he is called Emmanuel. The greatest promise, the greatest faithful act of God is to fulfill the word which he said that you will receive this Messiah into the world. And his name is Emmanuel, God with us. So it's in the very nature of God, in the very nature of the living God, to be faithful. And so we can be sure, when it does not seem so, that he is faithful and that he does that for all of us and he does it for the world and he does it for us. And then Matthew shows how, uh, how the faithful God works and he uses the expression for the first time in the gospel here, the Holy Spirit. It is by the Holy Spirit that what he intended to do, what he promised to do, he is enabled to do. He performed his greatest and most wonderful act of faithfulness in Mary. And uh, that was the beginning of the gospel. He started with his promise and he 
crossed over, as it were, into our world to fulfill his word, to fulfill his promise uh, in the world by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we've been singing about, lovely songs we've been singing this morning and hope you were able to join in in some fashion. Uh, we didn't sing it, but it's in our song. From heaven he came, helpless babe, entered our world, his glory veiled, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for all. There it is. He came and entered our world. Matthew says, Mary was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. The con child conceived in her is from the God, the Holy Spirit. And he was called Emmanuel, God with us. So you see, God has not just stood from afar and said, I am faithful, I will help you, I will do this. He's not stood from afar. He has entered intimately into our very human experience, what we call the incarnation, the embodying of God in Mary's womb. The body of Mary contains within it a body formed by the Holy Spirit. He is the with us God. He now works from the inside of creation and in turn, from the inside of us by his Holy Spirit. So if you want help, if you want strength, if you want to rescue someone, you have to get involved with them. I suppose one of the most distressing images that we might have seen over this COVID period is of a family outside a care home knocking on the window, speaking to grandma who's about to die or whatever, and we find that deeply, deeply distressing. Why? Because they can't be inside. They can't be inside with her. But that is what God has done. He has, as it were, come through the window. He has passed through the, the veil of flesh into the very womb of Mary in order to work things for our blessing, for our good, for our ultimate salvation. He has crossed over Emmanuel, God with us, and therefore God with you and with me. But then, of course, uh, Matthew also focuses on the child and he speaks about Jesus. Joseph is asked when he wakes up from his dream and uh, the angel has told him what to do. And uh, what he's to do is when the child is old enough, he is to name him Jesus. He is to be called Jesus. That's Matthew, uh, 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 Joseph's responsibility. Here is the child who is human flesh and he is going to do what is required because his name means to save, because he will save his people from the consequences of their sins. And of course, Jesus' life was that. He was faithful to the Father in his work. He was faithful to his disciples in teaching them everything that the Father had told him. And he is faithful to the work that he was called to do uh, on the cross, it is finished. The work is done. He was utterly faithful. So he is the faithful one, ultimately. And if we focus more deeply uh, in our times of doubt or fear or anxiety uh, upon this one who is faithful, it'll be not so much my experience of God's faithfulness, but the, the wonderful faithfulness of God in Jesus Christ, uh, even in the times when God seems absent. So my, I suppose the practical outcome of this is to learn to focus, as we've been doing in our singing and worship this morning, to focus more on this great act of God, uh, the promise of the Messiah who has crossed over into our human life and who is named Jesus to save us from our sins. And this is what we're about to do in our communion service, which I hope you will some, in some way be able to facilitate if you are at home. We focus upon the suffering of Jesus, uh, the death of Jesus, but also on his body, which he took in order to become the Savior and the Lord, and eventually the risen Lord, as we do it in remembrance of him. Uh, a final note, uh, it's interesting to see that Joseph uh, has no, no lines to say in the gospel story. Have you ever noticed that? He never speaks, not in any of the gospels does he speak. 
but it is implied here, quite clearly he did speak, uh, and it's implied here, because the angel says to him in the dream, when the right time comes, you are to name him Jesus. Now, we don't know when that happened. It could have been in the manger uh, at Bethlehem. But I think it's much more likely they waited until that eight-day ceremony in the temple, which was the naming ceremony. And I imagine Mary and Joseph uh, taking the baby Jesus there with a few bystanders or witnesses and with their little sacrifices, their poor sacrifices, which they offered, uh, Luke's Gospel tells us. There in, they stood in the busy court, surrounded by all the stuff going on, and there is this tiny baby in Mary's arms, and Joseph then speaks. What does he say? They say, well, what's his name? And Joseph says, Jesus. Jesus. And maybe he added the bit from the angel because he will save his people from the consequences of their sins. And so Joseph shows himself a man of faithfulness. He obeyed the word of the angel and he spoke the name Jesus over the child in that way. A man of obedience. And so also do we. We have that challenge upon our lives that when we First, utter the name of Jesus in prayer. And you say, Jesus, come into my life. You're speaking the name in faith. When you're baptized in this church, in this pool in front of me, you confess. You're asked by the pastor, the person baptizing you, to confess. And you confess Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. And then day by day and week by week as we come to worship and pray ourselves, we take the name of Jesus on our lips. We say, Lord Jesus Christ, hear my prayer. And be with me, I worship you. I call you Lord. And so during this time, when you have maybe a little more space, do that. Think of the, the teaching of Jesus and say, Jesus, I receive your word. Think of the healing of Jesus and say, Jesus, I re receive your healing. Think of the suffering of Jesus and say, Jesus, I thank you for suffering for me, his death to bear our sins, his resurrection, and his ascending into glory. Think of the gospel of Jesus, the one who came, the great faithfulness of God in the person of Christ, and confess him yourself. So speak his name often, and so prove faithful to him as he has been faithful to you. God bless you all.
from within. We come to this table now as an act of communion, of sharing together. And it's a strange time for us to have communion when we seem so separated from each other. But we remember as we um, reflect on the incarnation that God is with us. He's here with us in the church today. He's here with you in your homes today as well. And as we share the symbols of bread and wine, we are reminded of his body and his blood. So come, let us now share in this communion with one another. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come, not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us continue to pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the faithful one. There are moments when we have to wait for your intervention. But time and time again, we testify 
of the God who bursts through. The God who breaks through. The God who reaches in. The God who stands by us. Who walks with us. Who lives with us. Becomes one of us. And as we take these symbols of bread and wine, may we take in once again all that you have done for us through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. We take in his life. We take in his death. We take in his resurrection. And we take his promise that he will return for us. We ask your blessing now as we share this time together in his precious name. Amen. So if you were at home, um, and maybe you haven't prepared, but maybe you, um, if you'd like to reach into your kitchen cupboards and um, your bread tins, get yourself a slice of bread, or sometimes you might even have a biscuit to hand, but share in this time together, and we're going to do that now. The bread is the body of Christ, broken for you. Let us eat together in remembrance of him. The cup represents the new covenant in Christ's blood. Let us drink together in remembrance of him. Your death, O Lord, we commemorate. Your resurrection, we confess. Your final coming, we await. Glory be to you, O Christ. Father of all, we give thanks. We give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen.
workers oh let the king of my heart I hope you've enjoyed our first official live stream service on Facebook and thank you for joining us today. A big thank you to Francine and Roz for leading us in worship and also to Chris Boak for bringing the word today as well. So don't forget, we will be tuning in again um, next week at this time. Don't forget, you can click in and participate in our Sunday morning worship live on Facebook again. So as we close this service, let's say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless, stay safe and tune in next week. <laughs>